Okay, so this is the first in a couple of videos I'm going to do. Um, very introductory things, uh, ideas about VPL. Um, some of the things that kind of hung me up at the beginning because of the, this whole message flow uh, way of thinking about things versus normal linear programming. And so, like I said, if, if you're a VPL programmer, this is all, none of this is news. Uh, but if you're, if you're beginning and you're a little frustrated by what's going on, um, hopefully this will this will answer a couple of questions. So, in VPL, we've got uh, a couple of different areas. Uh, we have the diagram, which is your workspace. We have basic activities, things like uh, uh, variables, calculate uh, uh, data items, and then we have services. And you can see we have we have quite a few services here: um, interfaces to robot, text to speech. Uh, um, iRobot interfaces, all your simulations are in here too. If you're going to write a, a, a simulated, come down here, there, uh, simulated generic contact sensors, things like that. So, a lot of services in there, which are not what we're going to talk about today. Um, so, we're going to talk about just basic message flow. So, I'm going to go up into the basic activities and I'm going to grab a data and I'm going to bring it over here. And then I'm going to use a service. Uh, now, since there are so many, you can just type in a search and, and get to it pretty quickly. And it's a simple dialog is what I want to have. So I'm going to bring it in and uh, bring it into the workspace. And now I want to establish a message flow. So I'm going to go from data, and I'm going to bring it in the simple dialog box. Now, when it turns green, you can see that, that I've made the connection there. And so th it has a connections dialog and then there's another it's a data dialog which we'll see in a second but it says you know, I want to take the data value and I want to put it into an alert dialog which is what I'm going to be using for for demonstration here and so I say yes and and so that is set up but now it says what what form do you want this connection to be null is always the default uh, if you click the download or the the uh, the down arrow, I see that value is my other choice. I'm going to pick that. Now, it sounds pretty generic, and that's really because by design it is pretty generic. So, let's put 10 in as a data value and run it. And that's the little green arrow right here. Now, it's a brand new project. Uh, I'm going to give it a name. It starts up a DSS node, loads in the services and things so that it can run this application, and I can alert dialog up and it says 10. So this is exactly what we would expect to see. So let's add another dialog box. I'm adding another service that I already have in my workspace. Um, for reasons that you'll understand later. It wants to know if you want a separate service or if you want to continue using the same service. There's reasons that you pick one or the other. It's not for today. I said I'll just go ahead and use the one I'm, I'm using now. Uh, outgoing response into the dialog and things have changed a little bit. Uh, I, can, I can either come from an alert success or an alert fault. Alert success just means that the dialog box did what you expected of course and, and the message can move on and uh, the, the fault of course it would be if you were doing error logging or you know it's kinda like a try catch in, in C sharp so uh, but we're, we're assuming success and now I get my data connection box up again with my null as the default and I'm gonna say I wanna pick the value coming out of there and we'll run her again So there's my first dialog box. Now I don't see my second one because it only the message only continues on on success of the, of the first one. And since it's an alert, it wants to be acknowledged. So I will say OK. And the second one shows up, and and there's nothing on it. So so what's up with that? Well, here the alert dialog. If you mouse over it, you can see it is a type int moving between the two and over here it is a type default submit response type um, 10 has disappeared essentially the data flow 
for this integer has moved from the, the data block into the dialog bo block. It's been, it's been displayed and it's gone. And so it can't be used anymore in the program if your message is flowing through a dialog box. Um, so message flow is a little different than uh, linear programming. So to explore this just a little bit farther, I'm going to get another data, bring it in here. Oops, I don't want a data. I want a join. Now join is real interesting. Um, these message flows can can lose synchronicity. Uh, you can have multiple message flows moving through your program because this is a multi-threaded program. Uh, things don't always happen all at the same time. As a matter of fact, they won't happen all at the same time. But sometimes in your logic, or actually many times in your logic, you don't want to proceed until until a set group of things are completed. And that's where the join t comes in. Uh, you can take a message flow, like here, and bring that one into message, and select this one, and bring it into MSG0. And essentially, the data is going to this data value is going to flow in. This data value is going to flow in. This join is going to buffer each of these separately. And when it when both of these are sitting in their buffers, it will combine them and flow them out to the dialog. So you notice now when I connect, I have MSG. Well, that's my top uh, name in the join box don't have MSG0 so let's drop it down and see what's going on well okay so there's the value that you've seen before and under it we have MSG and MSG0 um, so just for fun let's pick value we don't get an alert um, if, if we mouse over that we'll see that it is type MSG and MSG0 int that shows that it's a complex message flow going on uh, let's run it and see what happens and There's our first dialog box, we get nothing, and of course our second dialog box, we're not going to get anything either. So um, so value doesn't work anymore. Uh, we can go into this, and by clicking on it, we can go over to the properties, which is essentially the same thing as that second connection, or second box that opened up, and that, that gives us access then to the message, to the messages in the, in the compound message flow. And so if we pick, uh, let's give this a something interesting like 20 uh, so that when we go to look at it we, we, we see something else than zero uh, so we'll go down here and, and as long as I put that in we'll, go, we'll look at it message zero and everything looks good we'll run it and now we see 20 we didn't ask for 10 we don't see 10 we see 20 so we'll shut the mode down and so um, let's take this I don't know I guess I'll leave that in there okay so we're gonna move this out of the way here and we're gonna pick a um, a new box uh, a new basic activity called calculate drop it in there I got pretty lucky that time and uh, you notice we got we have some uh, uh, errors that pop up here. Uh, the dialog box says that I have a message of type unknown and I don't know what to do with it and calculate says I don't have an, uh, a valid expression. So um, so calculate can do things like you would expect. Uh, one plus one kind of calculations. Uh, a lot more complex calculations than that too. Uh, but it, it also can be used to extract things out of uh, out of the message flow or to do things with messages in a compound message flow so if we click and calculate you see we have uh, some uh, some uh, constants false null true we also have a value a state message and message zero msg zero so um, so, for, so first of all as long, as long as we're doing that let's go over here because in the join uh, you, you can you can rename these you don't, you don't have to these are uh, 
you don't have to use the defaults if it makes more sense in your program. So, of course, now we go into calculate and we, well, now sometimes it doesn't pick it up, which is sort of interesting. Um, try it again here. There it is. Uh, maybe I was a little too fast. So now we have an M1 and M2. Uh, so we have this value here. Um, so, so I can actually double click on the value, bring it in there, and type dot, and now I can extract M1 and M2 out of out of there. But th they're available there too. But that shows you the you know that that these are these are parts of the of the message flow that is that defaults to values. So. Um, so anyway, we but we can use them natively. So let's say we want to uh, look at uh, both M1 and M2. So if we say M1 uh, plus M2, and we'll we'll see if we can display those. So uh, you, if if you have errors that are that are, that are up there, if you click on the on the connection, um, usually they'll clear those out. So we run it and node starts up and so why do we have a why do we have a blank box well the reason we have a blank box is because when we inserted the calculate box in to the flow between the join and the simple dialog we broke the flow and so the simple dialog now no it, it it it's talking to a new neighbor here so it doesn't really know what to do with it because you notice over here we we're back to the default value of null and so what we really want now is the generic value because calculate is, is extracting things out of here and creating um, a, a, a simple data flow again. So uh, look for that if, if, if things don't work the, the way you expect them um, when you insert things into data flow. And well, maybe that was what you expected or maybe it wasn't. Uh, they're ints, uh, they're not strings, and so uh, calculate is calculating. It's m one plus m2 but we really want to display them as the two values so uh, one one way to do that is just to um, put a, a space in there and as soon as we put a space in there uh, calculate casts the other things as strings and uh, or something like that maybe it doesn't really cast it but that's the way I think about it and so now we will have uh, We'll have 10 and 20 displayed as, as, as separate items. Um, this can come in handy. And of course, the second dialog box now, still, the, the message flow is not, not getting to it, and it, it doesn't have anything to display. So um, so anyway, sometimes if you are uh, getting uh, reading errors out, that is, it, it's, it's a standard uh, um, error. Sometimes to get it to display, you, you need to... Um, put a space in plus and then whatever the value of the error is and, and to get that to actually display in the uh, in the dialog boxes so it uh, might not make sense to you right now but sometimes if, if you're if you're looking at an output for something and it's just not displaying try putting a, a either a space in front of it or or, or cast it as, as a string um, which is basically putting that in front of in front of a variable uh, turns it into a string so um, okay so but we're still not. Uh, our second dialog box is not uh, is is not doing anything. So, uh, not displaying anything. So, how do you get it to display something when when the message flow has been interrupted? How do we do that? Um, so, what we're going to do uh, that doesn't matter right now. Move that over. Move this over here, and we're going to add something new. We're going to add variables. And variables go in here. Okay, didn't get lucky that time. Click on it. Into the variable. And a variable, you can get it or you can set it. This is nothing new. We're going to set it. Uh, we're going to come out of the variable, and we're going to go into M1. And we're going to do the same thing. and come in here, set it, and in the M2. Now you notice I'm just green highlighting the M2 box. If I green highlight the whole box, it's going to, it's going to, 
create a, another um, another element to the join, which I don't want to do. So, and of course now, I, I I took the flow out, didn't get rid of it, so I can click on the join, come over here and uh, and delete it off there, and so now I'm back to where I was. So, so when you're when you're drawing, you you want to you want the box highlighted that you're actually connecting to. So the variables are upset here. Uh, Actually, I have some variables in there, and, and um, so, so I'm from a previous time here. Delete those and pretend they didn't exist, because normally when you're starting out, you you hit the ellipse or you hit the drop-down box, and of course there's nothing there. You hit the ellipse, and uh, and you have a a, a blank box. So. I uh, should have said spoiler alert there. I to put a variable in. I hit add. The field is highlighted. Var. Uh, I choose the type here. All the normal types that you would expect. I'm going to use an integer, and uh, and there it's var. And and here, I. Uh, so you notice var is already in there. I'm coming down here to just, you don't have you can do all of this in one variable box and it, and in the scope is everything within this diagram. So you could add all of them from one variable box and then just go to the rest of them and hit the drop downs. But uh I'm going to add another one uh var1 and it's integer. And so and so I've got my two variables set. And um so now I did that. I, 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 so normally, when you set variables, you define the variable and then you give it a value. Here, you create the value so that you ha you start a message flow that contains that value and you feed it into the variable. You, it, and, and you essentially set the state of the variable to a value. And and so so this variable now has the state var has the state of ten, integer ten. The two two things match. If they don't match, uh, if we turn this into a, a, a boolean, which you would, you know, you're gonna have a problem here. Uh, so so it it type checks you, and that was ten. Oops. Well, I bet that would work, but doesn't look good. So so now if I run this, you know, you you, you know what's gonna happen here. So. Um, uh, what we're kind of worrying about is the second dialog box, getting something uh, happening in the second dialog box. And so, once again, you know, I have the error, doesn't know the incoming message, calculate says I don't have a valid expression. And this is where we're going to talk about. Now, you notice when I do the drop down, I don't have M1 or M2. I don't see my variables. I don't see anything here. I have uh, true or value and I have state. And this is where state comes in because remember I said we're setting the state of the variable over here. Uh, you double click state and period and we have var and we have var1. And that is uh, the, 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 those variables uh, you know live for the life of, of, of this particular program that's running, so uh, they're persistent, and and so if you need things that are persistent, this is how you do it. So if we want to look at at uh, var one or var, uh, it likes it. We go over here, we run it. That was the first dialog box, which doesn't doesn't have the. And there we have var one because we've ex we've we've gotten the calculated out the state of the uh, we've pulled out the state of of the var uh, variable and uh, uh, and then sent that message on to the simple dialog box the second one and said display it and so so uh, there we go so anyway I don't know if that if that helps as far as the way once again it's all message flow um it's it it's whether or not the message contains information you need or 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 um or you know or if it's lost in places in, in, along the flow uh if it is you know if you lose information down the flow you're going to you're going to want to set state earlier in so that you can reuse it uh, when it's necessary and so anyway that's kind of a message flow overview.